Hello everyone, welcome to the session. I start this session with the hope that all of you and your families and friends are safe amidst this pandemic. My name is Mukunda Dwarkanath and I'm a PM from Microsoft India. I welcome you all to this session called PM plus AI, a rockstar duo. In this session, I'm going to cover the topics of real world AI examples, PM's impact in such AI products, AI starter kit for PMs who are starting out on their AI journey. And finally, I'm going to conclude with the difference between a PM and an AI PM. What's not covered in this session is AI and ML courses details, models, tools, or AI companies to work for. Please do watch out for key takeaway slides, which has this type of star that you see over here. Now let's start with my introduction. I'll quickly start with introducing about my first experiment in artificial intelligence. A thought came to me about a year ago. In our planet, while there are billions of humans and millions of other species, still there are times when some or most of us find ourselves isolated, left out, disconnected from our near and dear ones. Either we are busy or they are because of our hectic schedules. So we end up latching on to the next immediate connection to our external world, which is electronic gadgets, especially in this pandemic era. So I thought to myself, what if we try to bridge this gap by creating a virtual companion, a virtual persona who can behave converse and interact like our real life friends or family. This led me to discovering a trove of new features like face detection, emotion detection, interaction capabilities, and much more to be added to this idea. Now, finally, when I had a quick sync with my colleagues and friends, we were looking at something which was not part of our standard traditional softwares or products. So now this gave us to an insight that this could be our first AI products vision. In fact, this was my first vision for an AI product. The story of how this became a successful working POC is for some other day. I won't get into the details of that, but for now, let me give you a tour of AI products out there that we can use and we do use in our daily lives, sometimes not even realizing the underlying AI technology. So this insight led to the point wherein I started looking out what's out there. There must be AI products which are not from future, but we are using it in our daily lives. And I could see most or all of us would have used maps, virtual audio assistants, digital assistants, auto completion when we are uh, doing our uh, emails or when you are on your leisure, when you're looking at social media, all of these have some of other form of AI embedded within them and even in autonomous cars. So if you look deeper, you will actually start seeing what's making these products stand apart from our regular software products. The main key components that I saw when I started digging deeper was that these products, almost all of these products, in fact, all of these products possess huge data. They just don't possess data. They process huge data. And how do they do that? The key factor was they go ahead and use this processing of data to make accurate predictions. And in most of the times they do real time decision making as if humans were making those decisions and they should be on par, if not above and beyond. So all of these key factors like predicting, taking accurate decisions is what makes these products get defined as AI products. Now that we know of everyday AI products that we would have used, let's look at how exactly PMs impact in such AI products by which PMs earn the name AI PMs. Because as the saying goes, 
behind every successful AI product, there's an AI PM. Now, let's look at PM's impact in an AI product. This, my friends, is a key takeaway slide. As we all know, when we are looking at the standard product cycle, we know that everything starts with a problem. And in the PM world, there is a worldwide saying, which is very famous, which is problems are a PM's best friend. And we always start with understanding the problem statement. What is a problem? This question gives us insights into the type of output that we want to define. And once you have this, you go ahead and define a vision against it. The vision to solve the problem. Until here, you have the standard PM qualities which you see in your daily life. But the next few pieces are the ones which makes us stand out. When you're looking at the huge data that you have, an AI PM starts visualizing the data. They start leveraging the data. They just don't process the data, but they process the data. This gives us enough information to categorize the outcome. Please note here, I'm not talking about the output. I'm talking about an outcome. Why are we so much latching on to the word outcome? Because when you are defining an AI product, you have to define how all a machine can take all the real time decisions that a human would take and a machine has to be most accurate about it. Now, this is what an AI PM's product cycle is defined as. Now, let's get into a concrete example so that it helps us in understanding these four uh, main points better. Let's look at a problem statement, which is lots of road accidents ha happen due to human errors. Now, what do we do about it? We define a vision stating that we develop a completely autonomous vehicle. And how do we do about it? This is where things get interesting and adventurous for an AIPM. We have so much of data from camera sensors that's out there in the vehicles as well as on the uh, streets. We can leverage all those big data and start visualizing the data. We can start defining the outcomes. And finally, when you give all of these as feature requests for the development team and once they implement it, the outcome that you get is a fabulous, completely autonomous, driverless, capable car. Now, this is just one of the examples of an AI product and how an AI PM looks about it. Now, once you have this, let's look at what does it take for a PM to transform herself or himself into an AI PM? First and foremost, we need to understand the AI landscape. What better way to understand the AI landscape other than the AI mind map, which is brilliantly uh, given over here in uh, a Medium article. You can see that there are several machine learning models, several machine learning topics. Let's do a quick deep dive into this. This AI mind map summarizes the AI world pretty accurately. As I said, we as AI PMs need to swim in the data. Once we get the data, we can check which stream in this mind map our AI product belongs to. To help better get, uh, get better insights into my statement, let's look at each of the products that we saw in the beginning of this session. You can see that maps belong to the deep learning and predictive analysis area, not just restricted to that, but majorly depending on that. Voice assistance and auto completions belong to NLP or natural language processing. We can also quickly recognize that most of the social media which hosts millions of videos and photos come under the computer vision. And finally, when you're looking at autonomous vehicles, they belong to a multitude of areas, including robotics and vision. Please note that, as I said before, these products often belong to more than one category of artificial intelligence or machine learning, depending on the vastness of the features that they hold. The AI mind map can be a good reference of which type, uh, which type of data you as an AI PM possess, which type of AI or ML does your AI belongs to. If you are a fresher in the AI world, 
all of this might seem quite overwhelming. And you might think, is there a starter kit that Mukunda can share? Of course I can. Because the main intent of this session is to bring PMs closer to the AI rather than make them feel overwhelmed. So here I am presenting you the starter kit for PMs in AI. Let's take a minute and pause and see what are all the major points that I'm covering. Please note, all of these are not standard templates. This is what I found out in my journey of AI. Not that I'm an expert of any sort, but these research areas are really good. Artificial intelligence is a wow area. So let's look at the first step when you are looking at a starter kit for a PM. First and foremost, there is no shortcut to this. We have to learn artificial intelligence and machine learning. While in this course, in this session, I won't give pointers on which courses are best. I can give you pointers on a few concepts. Main intent of ML or AI is to segregate the data that you have so that outcome or results can be accurately predicted. If your results are limited, like for example, looking at a photo, whether your face is present in a photo or not, then you are looking basically at classification. And if your results are infinite, like what would be the price of a house given an area it is in, then you are looking at regression examples. Adding complexity to this, if you can linearly separate the data, meaning there is a way to say it either belongs to this or that, if there is a distinction in the data that you can make or the out outcomes that you can uh, think of when you are computing on the input data, then those type of data are called as linearly separable data. Then in such cases, simple ML techniques are sufficient. However, if you cannot linearly separate data, then you need to start digging deeper to make it linearly separable. So that, my friends, results in you using neural networks. Neural networks is its own universe. And awesome researchers in various fields are happening in the neural networks world. I can go on and on about neural networks, but please go through courses, do uh, further research on that. That will that will give you enough uh, insights into neural networks. Time for us to move on this session to the next step. So once you learn the AI and ML techniques out there, please start visualizing the data whenever you get a chance. Once you are learning AI and ML concepts or techniques, you will start appreciating data even more. And what could be more appreciating once you are visualizing it to make sense of what the outcome can be. Now you are at a stage wherein you can also look at the third and the fourth steps, which is researching models and creating POCs. By now, once you are familiar with AI and ML techniques and you know how to play with the data, you can go ahead and start playing with POCs yourself with the research models which are out there, the models which are established. And then you are actually blurring out the lines wherein initially in the earlier days, there was a hard concept of PMs not programming. That's no longer true. Because in EA, PM and programming is part of the PM's world when it comes to AI products. You can and you will introduce yourself to several uh, research models and POCs. And all of these, trust me, uh, will help you in your AI journey. How, if you ask, then I'll, I have the ready answer for that. These two steps, step three of researching models and step four of creating POCs, these will help you to build the muzzle power required to discuss with developers, define with data scientists and research with researchers. And you can refine it all along the way and the end result will be an awesome AI product, which worldwide users will be willing to use. And finally, when you define the outcome, which is your step five in the starter kit, you will actually 
think differently, wherein you now have a fair advantage of knowing what's out there, how much data you have, how can you leverage on that data, what are all the existing or upcoming models, or if you if the need be, you need to create new models, and then you define the outcomes and the implementation is completed, you will have a successful AI product. Your AI product will shine bright amongst those out there. This, my friends, is another key takeaway slide. Now, we have come to a point wherein we have seen AI products, how they are different from the regular software products out there. We have also seen how AI PMs are smiling behind each of these AI products. What does it take for a PM to become an AI PM? How does the transition happen? And in order to help you, if you are in the starting part of your AI journey, then the AI starter kit, I hope, will be useful for you in your uh, journey starting points. Now, let's see, finally, what's the obvious difference between a PM and an AI PM other than the pay packages? If I can summarize this session so far in a single image, this would be it. Now you can see over here, let me use a laser pointer. So you can see over here, a standard pro a product manager, when she or he have to define a successful product, will have to look at user experience in a different domain. You will not just interact with the UX designer as you used to in your uh, software products. You will also look at researchers' inputs. You look at visual designers' inputs because the way user experience is going to be redefined in AI products is a totally different dimension than what we have all experienced. Now, when you are looking at the development, as I said, right, you will be discussing with developers on the models that fit the data that you possess. So you will have much deeper uh, discussions with developers and developer anchors. Then finally, this is the most critical piece that you see over here, which would be merged in your product managers or product owners uh, product cycle, which is interacting with data scientists in order to make smart predictions. Please note, smart predictions include accuracy, minimalistic errors, and most, if not all the cases, you will be looking at real-time decision makings. Once you are done with all of these, you are looking at a different landscape for you as an AI PM because in the near future, all PMs are expected to be AI PMs. There will no longer be any categorization between a PM and an AI PM. Every PM is expected to know artificial intelligence, machine learning, or at the minimalistic view, you will be looking at making use of all the data that our software products would have accumulated over a period of time, years, if not decades. This difference between a PM and an AI PM, my friends, is your third key takeaway for this session. So because we are looking at AI PMs becoming the norm, my humble suggestion is, please start taking relevant actions in this regard. It will, it will truly help you. Mark my words, probably a few years down the lane, you may or may not return, uh, remember my name, but hopefully you will get something out of this session. So to conclude, let me start with a special thanks to Product School because I'm grateful for them. They have agreed to have me as the host for this session of AI plus PM, a rockstar duo, which is very close to my heart. And uh, without them, this session would not have been possible. So I'm really thankful and grateful for them. And they have reached out to lots of PMs worldwide and they have initiated uh, all these webinars amidst this pandemic, which is really wonderful. And uh, I'm thankful for them for all of this. And finally, to conclude, I summarize. I will suggest you to make your own AI vision. Start with something, anything, big or small doesn't matter. Define your impact as a PM in your AI product. 
earn your title of being an AI PM and enjoy your AI product journey along the way as it's as exciting as it gets. I don't see anything bigger than this for a PM. I will conclude this with the hope that you are able to leverage the key takeaways to become a rockstar PM, which is an AI PM. Now, this includes PM's impact in an AI product, AI starter kit for PMs and difference between PM and an AI PM. Thanks everyone for giving me an opportunity to speak on this wonderful topic. I hope this session is useful for you. Thank you.